Hello everyone. Today we're continuing our video, our previous video on certificates by explaining PKI, public key infrastructures and web of trust. If you haven't watched the previous video on certificates, I highly encourage you to do so. First, we start with the PKI. Now, as we've established previously, a certificate is basically a digital version of a passport. A certificate is used to prove that you are who you say you are. So a digital certificate means that people can trust your public key. In a PKI, we are dealing with a trust center. We have our certification authority, which we've covered in the previous video. And furthermore, we have our registration authority. The registration authority deals with identifying a person who wishes to obtain a certificate. Now, we have in PKI our hierarchical structure. At the bottom, you see a couple of certification authorities that are trusted to sign a certificate. So if you have a certificate, it might, get, uh, it might have been signed by one of these hypothetical um, certification authorities. Now, we trust those certification authorities because, because we trust the regional certification authorities you see here in orange. And we trust those regional certification authorities because we trust the root but why do we trust the root? And or to be to put it in another way, who certifies root? Now, depending on your operating system, you can look at your root certificates in different places. I can show you here how to access them on a Mac PC. As you can see here, I'm in my Mac keychain, and if I choose system roots and certificates, I can see all the root certificates that are stored on my Mac computer. You can see here we have our DigiCert again. Um, you can identify these root certificates by validating that the issuer is the same um, company as the organization the certificate is issued to. And it also says root certification authority, so we know it's a root certificate. The rest of the information is um, not that interesting at the moment. Now we have seen that there are certain there are different kinds of certification authorities and if you for example are just a normal website that doesn't have any let's say web shopping uh, and you don't store any kind of uh, data so people don't need to trust you as much as they would for example a, a website with a web store where you enter your credit card and so on um, then it's enough to get uh, like a let's encrypt certificate but if you're actually dealing with actual user data, which might be very sensitive, and people actually need to trust that you are who you say you are in a more direct way, then you might need to get a a more like like stringent um, certificate certificate, and the certification authority might not be it might not be enough to use a free certificate which can be obtained by, for example, Let's Encrypt, and these things are regulated by a certificate policies. They say, okay, if you have a web shop, you need a certain kind of certificate. The last thing I want to say about PKIs is um, the concept of PKI islands. Now, if you work in a company, you know, or you maybe know that you have your own PKI, so your own infrastructure of public keys. Um, this works within your company, but it does not work when you email it to anybody else. So you cannot sign emails to like outgoing emails to other businesses um, because the, they are not within your PKI island. If they have a separate PKI island, um, the way to communicate or to use um, these certificates uh, for both islands or for both companies, uh, you would need cross certificates, which both PKIs um, sign of each other so that you can trust basically um, the certificates of the other island. Unfortunately, this almost never happens, and that's why these PKI islands will remain islands in the foreseeable future. That concludes PKI, and I'll just briefly, because it's not really that complicated, um, explain Web of Trust, which is a decentralized uh, public key infrastructure. Uh, with Web of Trust, we do not have a hierarchical system as we have in PKI. In Web of Trust, we have a transitive system, meaning if we have a couple of parties, in this case we have Alice, Bob and Charlie, 
and Alice trusts Bob and Bob trusts Charlie, the transitive relation of or the transitive property of the web of trust means that now Alice trusts Charlie. So A trusts B, B trusts C, therefore A trusts C. Now what this means in, in practice is that Alice uh, trusts Bob, so she signs Bob's public key. That means that everybody who trusts Alice now also trusts Bob because she signed his key. And the same thing with Bob. Bob knows Charlie, Bob trusts Charlie, so he signs his, so Bob signs Charlie's key. And therefore, by the transitivity rule, Alice now trusts Charlie's key. And everybody who trusts Alice now also trusts Charlie. So in this case, this is the web uh, of the web of trust. This is how trust propagates throughout the web of trust. And this is used, for example, in PGP, which is a way to send and receive encrypted mails and digitally signed mails, of course. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to the channel if you like, uh, like the video and I'll see you in the next one.